Hello and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Sheen and I am an Oxford and Cambridge graduate currently working as a strategy consultant in Dubai. And on this channel, we explore strategies on how to help women advance in their careers, but the tips are also helpful to everyone else. So let's get started. In today's video, I want to talk to you about how to communicate like a consultant. Now, what does that mean? I believe that in my short time that I've been here as a consultant, one of the most underrated skills that I've learned is communication. We learn so much about how to communicate with our team members, with our team leaders, with the clients and everyone else, right? And it is such an important skill because it shows how you come across, it shows whether you know what you want and it shows whether you know what you're talking about. And this will impact the other person's influence of you and therefore how willing they will be to help you or to listen to you. So therefore, we definitely need to have this locked down. So the preferred communication skill for all consultants is the top-down approach. I'm sure that if you are anywhere in the ecosystem, you have heard of this before. And what we mean by this is start with your key message. This is so crucial for us. Start with your key message of your underlining summary of whatever you've been asked. Start with that and then dig deeper. It's always a pyramid style, right? We start with the key message and then we expand if needs to be expanded, right? But always, always start with the key message. This is because everyone cares about the juicy stuff. No one cares about the everything else. I mean, that's not true. They might care, but for them to decide whether they care about everything else, they need to know what is the key message here? What is the key takeaway? What is the key action? What is your key summary? We need to know that first, and then we'll decide whether we, are, we want to learn more, whether we want to learn a specific aspect of what you're talking about, but first, juicy stuff, right? And for me, that has been quite hard. Coming from a scientific background, where all we care about is the supporting data, the supporting evidence, so we always start with, okay, so this was my methods. Even if you read at any kind of scientific papers or if you look at um, a thesis, it always starts with the methods, the aims behind those methods, and then it goes into the results. What did that bring? And therefore, what are the conclusions? So that's called the bottom-up approach. And for me, that's what I've been trained to do my whole life, right? So you always want to start with this because I've been trained that you will be believed or you know you are more credible when you're showing the supporting data the supporting evidence and you're thinking behind and then you get to the conclusion but in the consulting world in the business world people don't have the time first of all and people are very to the point and they just need to know what is the key takeaway and i feel like it is such human nature as well um, especially as a junior person on the team when you ask something you want to show the effort that you put in, the extra mile you went to get the data, or how you had this like breakthrough moment while you were analyzing the data, and you want to show the effort, the blood, the sweat that went into the work, and then get to the conclusion. But no one cares, and no one has the time, and no one is doubting whether you've done the work or not. Everyone is assumed to be doing what they must be doing and going above and beyond. So therefore, no one cares how much effort you've put in. We care about the final summary message, the key message. Now, what is the key message really, right? Um, one way that everyone will tell you to get to that is ask yourself, so what, right? After you've done all your interviews, all your analysis, you have all your data, you have the conclusion, and now, so what? What does that mean? Does that mean a specific action or specific situation? Usually, these key objectives have two main brackets that they fall into. It can be an action statement, so you need to do this, or you need to launch this, you need to launch here, this is the country that you need to start with. Or it can be a situation statement of, um, so we found that your problem lies here, or we found that you... Um, this thing is not working. So it's a situation. And these are the two usually cases where you will have a key message from. But the best way to know that is to say, so what? Look at your data and say, so what? And this is useful even in interviews when you're doing case studies. Whenever they ask you to summarize at the end, the one thing that you need to ask yourself is the so what? So, okay. Um, based on all of this, what does this mean for the client or what does this mean for the person leading the team and just start with that. So if it's an action statement, the so what will be, what will be the impact of that action that you're suggesting? Or if it is a situation statement, it's usually 
what has been the impact of that situation or what has led to that situation kind of thing you know so it's a bit of like my presence here as a consultant what is the impact of the thing that i'm suggesting to you or what is the impact of this the conclusion that i'm sharing with you what does that mean for you why should you care you know this is it so therefore we always start with a key message and then based on the key message if you are asked to expand you go on to the next level which are the key insights right and you will have several insights that support the key objective and then if you have to get into another level each insight comes from a set of data a set of interviews and then you go into the third level so it goes key objective insights and then data but now when you think about it even if you go on to the next level in terms of insight you might have different sets of insights there so where do you start you don't just blurt out things this is one thing that you need to learn in consulting is that everything needs to be grouped everything needs to be sorted into some sort of order we do not just give random things in random orders and this will be your horizontal logic right so this is on the same level now what is the logic here how do i present this so for example if you go into the set of data you always want to group them under one insight right and now when you have different groups you need to order them in some sort whether it is chronological order whether it is differentiated by products differentiated by countries but you need to have a logical reasoning as to how you present these groups in this particular order right it can't just be randomized it needs to make sense you know it could be anything it could be if it's a product it could be by color it could be by the country it could be um, by the most developed country to the least developed country it could be by the time at which you were looking at something like that there needs to be an order okay so therefore we've looked at the pyramid order from top bottom approach we start with the key objective the insights and then the data and then in the different levels we go horizontal logic you need to group and order now to make this a little bit more concrete we can look at a specific example because i know that this could be hard to imagine right so i have a little random case study here that i have written myself and we can look at it and look at two different answers when they were asked to give a summary of the progress and see why one is good and why one is not good. So here we have the we have the market and it's a market entry problem. The objective of the project was to assess the market entry opportunity for a new line of vegan cruelty free lipstick. And the interviews that we want to carry out are the conversations with internal and external experts in the makeup industry. And the data analysis that we want to carry out is analyzing the data from different sources, so different departments, finance, marketing, consumer surveys, all of that. And the results are that the first indication is that the best fit for the city where we want to launch this to as a market entry would be Dubai, right? So this is what we've found so far. Now the exercise itself is the CEO of the client company that you're working for on this project calls you and asks you, hey, how's it going? What is the status on the project so far? Give me a quick update, please. So here we need to test our communication skill. All right, let's see example one, right? So you've been asked for a quick update and we know what the problem was, we know what different methods were used and we know the overarching results, right? So let's read example one. Let's say this is Harry. So Harry says, the last few weeks, we have been super busy working on the project. I first interviewed all the heads of the different departments to collect market data from the site. After analyzing all the numbers, we realized it would be helpful to get an insight from the people working with consumers and experts of the makeup industry. So we scheduled interviews and those coupled with the numbers we ran earlier gave us a good overview of the different opportunities. Currently, Dubai is looking like the best first country to sell the new product, but we're still working on it. Now let's look at this. This is clearly bottom-up approach, right? He started with all the methods, the findings, and then onto the conclusion and saying that, but this is where we're at now, we don't know. So he has covered everything that he needed to say. It is not missing important information, but the focus is on the process and not the key takeaway, right? And while he's going through the process throughout, the client doesn't know where we are heading. Is this good? Is this bad? Have we found something out? We don't know, right? Now, in order to compare better, let's look at example two. Let's say this is Hermione. Our current hypothesis is that Dubai will be the best fit for the new product. This is based on three reasons. 
Firstly, consumer research shows that Dubai consumers are looking for such a product. Secondly, the competitive landscape is not yet existent in Dubai. This product will be the first one to be on the market. And thirdly, the distribution and logistics are already existent and well set up in Dubai for other products of the same client. Right? So this is on point. This is top down. Started with the key message, which is we found a city for you, which is Dubai. And the reasons for that are these three following. So they started with the key message and went into the three insights, right? And now if they wanted to expand on the data for each, they could, and the methodology if they wanted to. But the message is clear. The focus is on the key takeaway. So here you can see that although they are both saying the same thing, but being ordered and structured and following the top-down approach, they made it very clear. And from the beginning, the client knows, oh, we found a city, great. Why? Oh, okay, great. I'm convinced. Let's go. You know, instead of going through, okay, they did this. Okay. Okay. Oh, they found this. Okay. Oh, okay. This is this, but they don't know throughout the journey. What is the big picture and having a view of the big picture helps them understand. And we all have, you know, very limited attention span. You can switch off in the middle about some things and then suddenly you're like, wait, wait, what? Why Dubai again? So that's why we need to start with the top to bottom approach. So there we go, you have it. Um, you see the difference very clearly. You see how one person comes across as more professional and like they are on top of their ish and they know what's going on, right? And this is what we want to come across as, especially to the clients. And this skill is very important even when you're communicating on a day-to-day -day basis. Communicating first what you need or what you're looking for and then following that up with reasons is very useful. It's just it just makes everything clear. It's such open and clear communication with the other party. So this is it for today. I hope this was helpful in any way. If you have any questions about the top-down approach, please leave them in the comment section and I'll try to get back to you. Until the next one, bye.